Of Lebanese origin, this woman abandoned her cultivated academic and cosmopolitan life and took refuge in her hacienda, caring for it with words and sensitivity. Every time she meets a neighbor, she conveys her ecological message of respect toward nature. The first people who should value the natural wealth of Marajo Island are its inhabitants. Not much tourism reaches here. Therefore, whatever is preserved will be beneficial for them and their children. Of the four buffalo breeds that are bred in Brazil, this is the most admired. Of docile behavior and horns that can grow up to three meters from one point to the other, the carabao is an impressive buffalo that sometimes brushes against the ground with its horns. Not even in Vietnam have we seen anything like this. The police officers of Sode prefer the Mediterranean breed for their cruising. Its strength allows them to travel without difficulty through a town that remains flooded six months out of the year. For the romantic traveler, the Iberian Peninsula is the bull hide. And this archipelago of the Amazon River is the buffalo hide, because the whole of this animal is put to good use. The saddles and even the boots that the officers use are made of its hide. This animal is very easy to keep under control, easier than horses. It's an extremely docile animal. It won't easily rebel. And since 1933, the police force has taken on this singular characteristic because we considered that in the eastern region, in the far eastern part of the world, buffalo patrols don't exist. The buffalo is a sacred animal there, and the truth is that our police force here in Marajo is the first and only one to use buffaloes for patrolling. In this original police force symbol, we can see a military officer on horseback, but today the buffalo is characteristic of us. We still continue working with horses, but we're far better known for being the police force that rides buffaloes. The male buffalo can weigh up to 1,200 kilograms and is a very resistant animal highly valued by the military police of Pará. Besides producing a milk that has a lot of fat, remember that mozzarella comes from these udders, its meat is also delicious, and the hides are excellent for tanning. The Marajo buffalo is a unique means of transportation for the police, another whim of the Amazon River and its inhabitants. Large distances are covered here in this 149,000 square kilometer estuary by large passenger ships that grow slower with each crossing. We can't see the shores from here, but it's as if we were at sea. From this navigation point, there is a distance of 350 kilometers from shore to shore. But don't forget, in spite of what it may seem, we are still in fresh water. The inhabitants of the eastern Amazon spend half their lives on boats. Theirs is a liquid land, although it may seem the opposite. The only firm thing here is this global reality. Planet Earth should be called planet water. The Amazon River contributes to this by giving 20% of the world's fresh water to the sea. Each second of a domino game 
of daydreaming, or a siesta. The Amazon will be sending 200,000 cubic meters of water to the sea, a natural phenomenon that is difficult for the human mind to assimilate, since we are used to looking no further than our own backyard. In spite of our trifles by the thousands, la nave va, the ship goes on, and the river cannot stop. Little by little, the ocean's presence is noticed. These urubus feed on it in spite of the fact that the corpse is on a beach, 100 kilometers away from salt water. Don't be fooled. The waves your eyes are contemplating come from the river. We are still on the Amazon River, but a sea dolphin has come here to die. The river has its own botos, which is what the two river dolphin species that inhabit the Amazon are called here. This, on the other hand, is a sea dolphin, a zoological quirk that results from the joining of the Amazon River and the Atlantic Ocean, borderline nature right before our eyes. Another peculiarity of this region, a blend of river and sea, is the mangrove swamp. Here at the mouth of this enormous estuary, this flooded forest represents one-fifth of all the Brazilian mangroves. They represent the full vigor of a river that from its birth in the Andes, on the other side of Latin America, has never stopped sowing life. Man knows this, and hundreds of families find a living here. Dirtying yourself with mud up to your ears is unimportant when the reward is the crayfish of the Eucides cordatus species, a crustacean that was eaten, according to archaeological finds, by the inhabitants of this mangrove swamp thousands of years ago, and which everyone calls Cangrejo Usa. Fringing the line, feeling through this tepid mud called tijuco, and above all, taking care not to fall upon the hideout of a poisonous snake, this tirador, as the crayfish collectors are called, works his morning out. The mangrove swamp is rough. The tiradores anoint their bodies with a mixture of gasoline and kerosene to repel the attack of the maruim, small insects with a big and powerful bite. A good tirador can feel the females of the species out by introducing their hands inside their hideouts and checking the way their claws are set. The female crayfish are called countesses and are never captured so they can continue reproducing. Apart from the aforementioned species, others such as the siri are well liked in the regional markets of Vej or Pesu and in Balem de Pará. In this large market of Amazon products, the crayfish are sold in cambadas, packages of 10 crayfish that cost three US dollars. These creatures with an outer space appearance and an earthly taste produce a large amount of money. Official sources from the São Caetano de Odivelas town council provide crucial data 
In 1990, from January to May, 8 million crayfish were sold. The law currently regulates this overactive business, limiting the seasons during which they can be captured. But only the common sense of the inhabitants of Bara can keep this river's wealth alive.